Thanks. How are you doing? Thank you. Well, before I pass the word over to you, we will have a voting, a live voting. Ooh. Yeah. Let's see what people are saying. So I see that some of you are already aware of what's happening. You have a live voting device attached to your chair, little white thing. I will give you a question very soon and three possible answers. And after I say, please vote now, you choose one answer. It's that simple, isn't it? So can I have the question, please? Ooh, so. People have different opinions of Airbnb. <laughs> what is your take? I'm not asking you, I know what yours is. What is your take on Airbnb? One thumbs up, then plus one, two somewhere in the middle, or a three thumbs down. And please vote now. Okay, 10 seconds. So what do you think? What are people voting for? It's a way to either build up or really take down my confidence before my presentation. <laughs> Let's see. Well, either way, you're going to have good arguments, I guess. So, thumbs up, 57 right. points. Well, what can I say? I'll take it. Thank you. See, there's so many people from the hotel business in the audience and still thumbs up. Have a great speech. All right, thank you, thank you. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Thanks for uh, being here. Uh, for me, it's great to be back in Berlin, and it's an honor to be able to address you here at ITB. I'm also super excited because two weeks ago, uh, we made a number of big announcements, which is uh, what I'll share with you today. But before I do, I want to give you some context. Airbnb was started 10 years ago uh, by myself and, and two co-founders. And back then, when we told people about the concept, they said, you're crazy. They said, strangers, people will never want to stay in strangers' homes. Well, one by one, early adopters used the service, but even so, many people would say, Airbnb, that's interesting, but it's not for me. And so Airbnb became this alternative. But after 10 years, we've come a long ways. And today, more than 300 million people have actually used Airbnb. And since I'm in Europe, let me also share that out of that 300 million, 142 million of those guests have actually stayed in Europe, resulting in 17 billion US dollars being paid to European hosts. But 10 years later, with all this growth, Airbnb is still considered an alternative. And it's still not for everyone. Our mission is that everyone can belong anywhere. And I think we've done a good job with the anywhere part. We're in 81,000 different cities. We're in virtually every country of the world. But we still haven't achieved the everyone part. And that's going to change. We recently announced updates that we think will make Airbnb for everyone. And today, I want to share with you the roadmap for how we're going to get there. Let me start by saying that Airbnb works in partnership with our hosts to provide amazing experiences for guests. And thus, our plans must begin with investing more into the success of our hosts. Our approach is to build a strong community of hosts and recognize our best members. And so, the first thing I want to share is a number of updates we're making to the Superhost program. Superhost recognizes our very best hosts. These are hosts that are highly rated by our guests, and they are effectively our most iconic hosts. And we have about 400,000 super hosts uh, globally. These are the benefits that we give to super hosts today. We give them a badge. We give them a $100 travel credit. But we want to invest so much more in our very best hosts, which is why we're going to be offering 14 more benefits. These are rolling out over the course of 2018 to bring us to a, to a total of 19 total benefits. The new benefits are things like discounts on smart home products and more visibility and exposure on Airbnb. These enhancements are rolling out over 2018. This is just the beginning of what we envision as a world of benefits for our most iconic hosts. But we get asked the question all the time, which is, you talk about your best hosts, but what about your best guests? What are we going to do for them? Well, if we're going to have a world of benefit for our best hosts, we should also have benefits for guests, which is why I'm excited to announce that we're rolling out Super Guest. 
very original, I know. <laughs> Super guest is your passport to a new travel lifestyle. And it's going to be benefits across the entire travel journey. So let me give you just a couple examples of where we're taking this. Let's start with homes. We, we surveyed our hosts and we asked them, um, we asked them, what would you offer uh, to somebody who is a super guest? And, and, and for, as background, hosts told us that they care a lot about uh, the quality of their guests. And so we said, okay, if we were to give you super guests, what would you, what would you offer to them? And the majority of our hosts that were surveyed said they would offer discounts, exclusive inventory, and last minute booking just for being a super guest. We've also had numerous companies offer to provide for our best guests things like airport pickup, flight upgrades, and access to airport lounges. So this will be coming later this summer, uh, and we'll, that's when we'll officially launch Super Guest, your passport to a new travel lifestyle. We're going to be starting with a pilot this spring uh, for 10,000 lucky guests. Uh, more to come. Well, let me say that Superhost, Super Guest, these are two sides of our existing community. And it's really, really important that we take care of our existing community. But I want to get back to this idea that Airbnb should be for everyone. And if people feel like it's not for them, well, this is something we've been thinking a lot about. And as we think about it, we uncovered something, which is that it wasn't obvious to us at first. What we realized is that over 10 years, 10 years ago, Airbnb was really designed for a time when we were much smaller. And we think that's actually part of the problem. Let me show you. This is our site that we launched August 11th, 2008. And if you were to search in San Francisco, this is what you would have seen. Featuring 16 listings with such memorable classics as Tiki Tastic and Get Fit, and my favorite, Simple, which pretty much sums it up. So here's the thing. Airbnb was designed for like cities with 100 homes. And basically the idea was a simple list of listings. And 10 years later, our core design hasn't changed that much. It's still a list of listings. But 10 years later, some things have changed, which is we've gone from hundreds of listings to thousands of listings to tens of thousands of listings to hundreds of thousands of listings to 4.5 million places to stay. And I truly believe that we have more choices than anyone, and I believe that we have the perfect place to stay for every guest, but the perfect place can just be really, really hard to find. So I want you to imagine something. Imagine that you need to buy a shirt, and so you go into a clothing store, and there's a clothing rack, and on the clothing rack are 4.5 million shirts. This is the problem that we have. We probably do have something for everyone, but it's just super hard to find anything. And so that's the core problem that we want to fix. And so we're introducing Airbnb categories. Airbnb categories connect every guest to the perfect home. Let me explain. So today we organize our listings into three categories. Shared room, private room, and entire home. And so basically we take 4.5 million listings and we say everyone must go into one of these three categories. But the problem is that we have more than just shared rooms, private rooms, and entire homes. So we're going to be adding four new top-level category types. And these are just to recognize the wide variety of places that are already on Airbnb. These new categories are vacation homes, bed and breakfasts, boutiques, and what we call unique. So let me take you through an example of each, starting with shared rooms. Shared rooms are typically couches or pull-out beds in living rooms. They're super affordable and a very social way to travel. When we started Airbnb, this is what my co-founders offered in their living room, a shared listing. The average price per night for a shared room is $38. This one is, is 18. Private rooms are part of our heritage. They're some of our highest rated, and they offer a great value. We have nearly one million private rooms on Airbnb. This listing is hosted by Yulia and Silvio in Havana, Cuba, and it's $60 a night. I've actually been there. They serve a wonderful breakfast by the pool. Uh, 
Fun fact about Cuba, we opened Airbnb in Cuba just three years ago uh, when the regulation in the U.S. changed. And since then, we now have 32,000 homes in Cuba, and a million guests have stayed in Cuba on Airbnb. Entire homes. These are homes that people live in, but they rent out when they're not there. This is the majority of our business. Uh, this host, Magdalena, uh, rents her home in Madrid, Spain. It's $96 a night. She welcomes every guest with a welcome basket, coffee, bread, and a guidebook showcasing the best tapas in Madrid. Now, we also have vacation homes. These are dedicated rentals that hosts do not live in most of the time. They're often located in ski and beach destinations. This is Remy's chalet in Austria for $165 a night. We have 34,000 chalets on Airbnb. For hundreds of years, well before Airbnb, there have been bed and breakfasts, which are often historic properties, like this 16th century manor house offered by Francis and Rupert in Cambridge for $100 a night. Boutiques are professional hospitality businesses that usually have a unique style or theme. And there's a new generation of boutiques that offer a community built into them, like this one called The Drift in uh, San Cabo, Mexico. Now, the last category I want to talk about is unique. Unique includes things like tree houses, boats, yurts, domes, airstreams. And we have 121,000 unique listings on Airbnb like this one uh, offered by Katie and Peter, a treehouse in Atlanta, Georgia. It's the most wish-listed home globally on Airbnb. These are immensely popular. And Peter, uh, the host, built this uh, treehouse himself. So right now, hosts are in the process of updating their profiles with the new categories. But by this summer, guests will be able to search through seven different categories. And I think this will make it a little bit easier uh, to find the right place to stay. But again, there are 4.5 million homes on Airbnb. So even seven categories, it's still not very specific. What if we want to get even more specific? You might be wondering, well, well why would I want to get more specific? So let's, let me give you an example. Let's say you want to travel to Paris. So you go and you type in Paris. We have 65,000 homes in Paris. OK, so we're not going to look through 65,000 homes. So let's add some categories. Uh, let's say I'm going to stay in a private room and in an apartment. Great. So now you're down to 10,000 homes. So can we refine it some more? So we're going to be adding even more subcategories to help guests refine their search so they can find the perfect place to stay. One of the categories we're going to be adding is architectural style. So let's take rustic, for example. If we type in rustic, here's what we're going to see. Now, I want to also find a place with a balcony because I really enjoy a good view. So I'm also going to add balcony as a requirement. And to make things even more interesting, let's say I want to stay with a musician. So you can literally refine down to the perfect place to stay. If you're a family and you're traveling to Seattle, you can stay in a family-friendly home with a chef's kitchen with a crib, or near a zoo. With categorization, there are endless ways to discover the perfect home. So you see, we're going to be adding thousands of new categories. And this will make it easier for guests to find the perfect place to stay. We're building one of the largest home databases. And in this home database, we already have 170 million photos, 166 million guest reviews, which can help inform our categorization process. So these are the new categories, connecting every guest to their perfect home. But how would you find the perfect home, not just for you, but the right home for the right type of trip? Because every trip is different. Well, we're also adding something we call Airbnb collections. These are great homes for every kind of trip. Now, we did a survey. We asked 10,000 guests, why are you traveling? And I was pretty surprised by the answers. Not so much by what the answers were, but by how many there were. People are using Airbnb for all kinds of reasons. And so what we did was take many of the most popular reasons, 
people were traveling, and we organized our homes by those reasons. And we came up with nine collections. The homes in each of these collections have a 4.8 rating or above, and they've got tailored amenities and special services. One of the most popular types of trips are family trips. And in our family collection, every home has a five-star review specific, left specifically from families. So these are generally entire homes with full kitchens, Wi-Fi, TV, and we have 145,000 homes in the family collection. Now, one of our most common use cases is uh, traveling for work, something I'm sure we all do a lot of. And Airbnb can be a great option for business travel, but you need to find the right home. When you're traveling for work, you want to be able to have a flexible cancellation policy, self-check-in, you want to be able to have a desk, and reliable Wi-Fi. And so in our work collection, we have 65,000 homes. Both the family and the work collections are available today, but we're excited to roll out more throughout the year. These will be our first nine collections, making it easier to find great homes for every kind of trip. Now, if we were to take new categories in Airbnb collections, we were to bring them together into a single app, what do you think that app would look like? I'd love to give you a short preview of what our app will look like coming this summer. Maybe a little louder, the audio. You can hear it a little bit. It's getting louder. You think it's on the computer? Okay. One moment, please. You want to go to headphones? Uh, okay. And if we can go back to the screen up, up top. Okay, we're going to try it again. So we want to make sure that we take care of everyone in the Airbnb community. And part of this is acknowledging that over the last 10 years, a lot has changed. And in our community, guest expectations have evolved, meaning the expectations have gone up. And our guests are seeking a higher level of comfort and quality. But something else is happening too, which is that many of our hosts are going above and beyond even the super host standard. These are hosts who are immaculately designing their homes. They're making sure that when you get there, all the details are taken care of. The kitchen is stocked, the coffee is ready. But if you were to look and search on Airbnb, it would be difficult for these hosts to stand out. And so what we want to do is recognize and reward their commitment to quality. And so today, I'm excited to present Airbnb Plus. Airbnb Plus provides all the comforts of home, plus more. These are beautiful homes from exceptional hosts, and every one, single one of them is verified for quality. 
So beautiful homes. Each of these homes feature the host's distinct personality with thoughtful design. These are some of the homes of Airbnb Plus. The average price is less than $250 a night, but they're insanely nice. This is a private room in Toronto for $65 a night from Host Rush. This is part of the Airbnb Plus collection. Now, Airbnb Plus homes aren't just insanely nice, they can also still be very unique. Todd and Kimberly host this Airstream that is now part of Airbnb Plus. These aren't just beautiful homes, these are really exceptional hosts. And what makes the host exceptional? Every single one of them has a 4.8 rating or more. And 75% of these Airbnb Plus hosts uh, are, in fact, super hosts. Like Matt here, who lives in Venice. He's a creative director for a surf culture brand, and he specializes in design and illustration. And his home is really a reflection of himself. Matt has a house in Venice, Los Angeles. His guest house is a combination of California modern and rustic. It's clean and minimal, has custom cedar work. Airbnb Plus homes are verified for quality. We're actually sending a team to do a 100-point in-person inspection of each of these homes. And when we show up, broadly speaking, we're looking for three things. The home is clean, it's comfortable, and it's thoughtfully designed. And so a 100-point inspection, I'm going to go through each of them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm going to give you three examples, though. Uh, first. Fully featured bathrooms is one requirement. Clean and comfortable bedding is another. And the kitchen should be fully equipped. So beautiful homes, exceptional hosts, verified for quality. But we're adding one more thing for guests. When you book an Airbnb Plus home, we're also adding premium support. This is a dedicated team, dedicated to fast resolutions, just in case there are any problems. Now, if you're a host and thinking about being a plus host as well, the first question you might have is, why should I become a plus host? Well, I'd say there's three reasons. The first is top placement. We'll have better search ranking, a custom badge, and editorial support for you. And you see 73% of our guests said they'd be willing to pay more to stay in a home that was verified. And the second is in-home services. These include things like design consultation, personalized verification, and expert photography. And the third is premium support for hosts from a highly trained team as well. So Airbnb Plus is available in 13 cities today with 2,000 homes to choose from. But by the end of the year, we will have 75,000 homes in 50 cities worldwide. And in fact, just in the last two weeks since we launched, we've had more than 12,000 homes apply to be a part of the program. So we're off to a good start. So let me give you uh, an example of what, what Plus looks like. Thank you. So that's Airbnb Plus, all the comforts of home, plus more. 
But before I end, I want to show you one more thing. We asked ourselves a question. What if we went beyond? One year ago, we acquired a company called Luxury Retreats. Luxury Retreats has two decades of experience delivering incredible hospitality. And they have some of the world's nicest homes. And we asked, what if we brought together high-end hospitality with one of the largest travel communities in the world? How could we deliver a trip of a lifetime? If we're going to deliver a trip of a lifetime, it would start with some of the finest homes in the world. And we certainly have thousands of these homes. Let me show you. This is Villa Saraswati in Bali. It has a 65-foot pool, an entire children's playground. Or ski in and out of Owl Creek, Owl Creek in Aspen. We also have, uh, in urban areas, uh, this, this one, Hancock Park Estates in Los Angeles. Or if you want to be more remote, check out Villa Avalon in Costa Rica. A place I love to visit is Tuscany. This is the incredible Villa San Luigi. It was commissioned uh, by a famous Italian family in the 16th century and has uh, recently been restored. It has an olive grove, a large vegetable garden. But if we want to go beyond, homes are just the beginning. Because to go beyond, we need to create magical experiences, like truffle hunting, cooking lessons with local chefs, and so much more. So world-class hospitality, extraordinary homes, unique experiences, all to create the trip of a lifetime, and it's custom designed. Very dramatic. <laughs> Beyond by Airbnb, the trip of a lifetime, custom designed, and coming this spring. So in closing, today I showed you five things. Superhost, which is a world of benefits for our most iconic hosts. Superguest, your passport to a new travel lifestyle. New categories and collections, so you can find the perfect home for you. Airbnb Plus, all the comforts of home, plus more and beyond by Airbnb, the trip of a lifetime, custom designed. And when you put these five things together, we think we finally do have a home for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And when I look at all those beautiful homes, I think my apartment is really boring. <laughs> It's like, oh Lots my of God, I think, there, yes. yeah, some of you do too, right? Yeah. Like, oh my God, do you have any classes on like interior design? I mean, that would <laughs> be nice. I can't say I'm responsible for that. I myself don't necessarily have a lot of style, but our it's hosts a, do. They're amazing. They're really amazing. Thank you, thank you. Um, the Airbnb host experiences, how well accepted are they? This is something we launched a year ago. Uh, it's now launched in 60 different markets. There's about 6,000 experiences currently live. Uh, Last year, it grew 25x, so it's off to a very, very strong start. 
And this year, we plan to take it to 1,000 markets, so from 60 to 1,000 markets. It's going to be a really big year for experiences. Uh, and I think it's great. I mean, it really celebrates everything that Airbnb is known for in terms of being you know, super, super unique, super authentic, local, personal connection. Um, you know, I'm proud to have created a, a unique product with experiences. And there are really interesting things that you can do. As I, 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 yesterday, when I looked at the website, it's like you can do, you can bake sourdough bread in San Francisco, which you can only do in San Francisco. You can learn that. You can learn how to bake Japanese bread in Tokyo. It's like right. Amazing. So the idea is basically these are ordinary people taking something it is that they are passionate about and yeah. turning it into an experience that they can offer to visitors from around the world. And it's it can be uh, you know cooking is yeah. a, is a very popular one. Outdoor activities, whether it's you know, surfing or bicycle tours or yoga is another very yeah. popular category. But, you know, there's it is, it is a literal, literal long tail of so many things you can't imagine. Yeah, there are a lot of yoga teachers there, right? Yeah, that, that's <laughs> a big one. <laughs> This is so cool. Um, so how does Airbnb actually deal with the protests against supposedly too many Airbnb tourists in overcrowded cities? Well, first, I think it's important to recognize that you know tourism is so important to cities, um, and and it's important because of the huge amount of spending it brings in. Um, and so, I think it's important to recognize that, and also the trend, the fact that tourism is only going to increase in the years and decades to come, uh, driven by uh, an increasingly affluent middle class in, in Asia and China in particular. Um, and so cities must ask themselves, how are they going to cope with an increase in visitors? Mm -hmm. And I actually think Airbnb can be a huge part of the solution uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that 75% of our homes are outside of the traditional hotel districts. And so uh, it's a way of spreading uh, the tourism over a broader surface area and actually bringing the benefits of tourism uh, into communities that don't normally uh, benefit. Because as a visitor, you often spend your money close to where you're staying, you know, in the local coffee shop, local restaurant. And so, um, you know, this is really important, actually, for a lot of uh, neighborhoods that normally don't participate in tourism. That's one. Two is that in rural areas, we've actually added capacity that really didn't exist. In a lot of rural areas, there simply aren't hotels. There's no place to stay. And yet, uh, people are putting their homes up in, on Airbnb. And um, as an example, last year, uh, across 11 countries in the rural areas, uh, we drove a uh, billion dollars in, in, in visitor stays. Um, and so I think this is also a great way to help people not just visit you know, the iconic destinations of you know, Paris and Rome, et cetera, but also get out uh, into the countryside and, and, and have those kind of travel experiences yeah. that are really unique and people love. There just hasn't historically been a place to stay. Hmm. And actually, we talked about that backstage in Berlin, for example. There was a little problem that it wasn't allowed anymore for a while, but you said it's going to change. Right. So Airbnb is obviously a new model that wasn't contemplated by any of the existing regulation. Of course, accommodation is a heavily regulated space. Uh, and so, you know, there's been this progress that cities around the world have been going through, which is, you know, understanding how do you take something new and incorporate it while also putting guardrails into place. And you know, that's not always a smooth process. Um, but we've made remarkable progress, including here in mm -hmm. Berlin. Uh, there's a new policy uh, currently going through, uh, going through the process of, of, of debate uh, that would, uh, for the first time, really recognize uh, people who want to rent out their, their home on a part-time basis and, and make that easy to do. And yeah. so, you know, even in a place where, in, like Berlin, where it, it historically has been very strict, uh, we're seeing positive movement. Uh, and, you know, the backdrop is that 400 cities uh, around the world have changed their policies uh, to accommodate home sharing with guardrails, of course, um, as well as, you know, formalize things like how taxes should be handled, et cetera. And, and uh, we certainly want to be a good partner to cities. You know, we're building a long-term business, and so having a positive relationship is important. And so, you know, sometimes that means making compromises, but I feel good about the progress. Um, and we're doing, I think, some remarkable things uh, in partnership with cities. The thing I'm very proud of is, uh, together with cities, we've actually facilitated the collection of more than 500 million U.S. dollars in taxes um, through our, our, our platform. Yeah. So we make it really easy 
uh, rather than cities having to go and collect the tax, um, the, the hotel tax or the, the transient occupancy tax directly from hosts, we as a platform can do that through technology. And so they actually can just get a lump sum uh, and all the, all the supporting documentation uh, for that, and it's just easy. So I think that's a great win-win. Yeah, good to hear. So are you ready for another voting question? See how the atmosphere has changed maybe or okay. hasn't? Okay, right, let's, let's do it. Okay, please, the next question. Once it's up, there it is. <clears throat> How do you assess the future evolution of Airbnb? We, we've heard so much about the future evolution, and it's so exciting, and we want to know now. Press one, if you think it's going in the right direction. Press two, if you're saying, ah, oh, right direction, but still needs some adjusting, maybe. And three, going in the wrong direction. Please vote now. I cannot imagine it's three, actually, this, this you know, really after what you've talked about. <laughs> no, no, that would be really surprising. Well, we will see in a second. So, oi, 70%. Well, congratulations, Nathan. Oh, I think you. it cannot get any better than that. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Well, I guess you're really going into the right direction, and we're really looking forward to what's going to come in the next years. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>